In this video, we will look at the basic organization of the periodic table, which is one of the most iconic and important tools available for understanding chemistry. Watching this video is one step towards meeting the learning objective of describing the organization of the periodic table, including the major groupings, cognate ions of the main group elements, and diatomic elements. The periodic law is basically the idea that certain groups of elements have similar properties, and these occur in a repeating pattern when the elements are arranged by mass. This observation is primarily attributed to Dmitry Mendeleev, who noticed the patterns and even used them to predict the existence of elements which were unknown at the, his time. Modern periodic tables arrange the ions by increasing atomic number which is the number of protons associated with each element. So again, the idea is that elements with similar properties are going to recur in a repeating pattern throughout. So when we then arrange the elements as a table, we end up with elements which have similar properties falling into the vertical columns. Here's an example of the current full periodic table showing elements 1 to 118. All basic tables show the atomic number and symbol associated with the element. Many tables also show the full name and the atomic mass, and this one also includes the property of electronegativity, which we'll talk about in more detail at another time. You will also notice that the table has very specific block structure, which is not arbitrary. Elements with similar properties occur in columns, and later we will discuss how these properties are ultimately related to how the electrons are arranged around the atoms. You may also notice that most periodic tables have two rows that are written under the table. These rows correspond to the lanthanide, first one, and actinide series of elements, which is the second one, which are very heavy and often unstable. This figure illustrates why these rows are generally written under the main table. If the elements were left in place where they belong, we would end up with a very stretched out periodic table that would be difficult to fit on most sheets of paper. The columns of the periodic table are referred to as groups, or sometimes families of elements, and the rows are often referred to as periods. The modern periodic table has a total of 18 groups, which are the columns as we go across, and seven periods, which are the rows as we go down. The periods are referred to by their numbers 1 through 7, and groups can be referenced using the numbers 1 to 18, or using an older system which involves a number in the letter A or B as shown on this slide. Other periodic tables may incorporate additional information about the elements. This table has been color-coded to show the different types of elements. We have the metals, which are sort of in this orangish color, metalloids, which are the purple ones here, and nonmetals, which are these light blue ones. It also shows the state of each element by the color of the chemical symbol. Solids are black, liquids are blue, so that's mercury, and bromine, and gases are red, which is basically the elements in this upper right corner, and hydrogen. Let's look at these groupings in a little bit more detail. First of all, we have the metals. This is the largest group of elements, and they're found on the lower left and middle of the periodic table. Generally, metals share certain properties, such as that they are good conductors of heat and electricity. They can be pounded flat into sheets, meaning they are malleable, or pulled into wires, meaning they are ductile. They are also often shiny and tend to lose electrons when they undergo chemical changes. All metals are solids at room temperature except for mercury, which is a liquid. The base unit for all metals is a single atom, and these generally form crystalline or regularly arranged structures. Here are some examples of the crystalline solids formed by some of the metals. For now, you should just be aware that there are different structures that can be formed and that the exact structure is going to depend on the metal. The structure is partly what gives metals their properties. Nonmetals are in the upper right corner of the periodic table. In contrast to the metals, these are generally poor conductors of heat and electricity. They are not ductile or malleable, and they typically gain electrons when they undergo chemical changes. At room temperature, five of the nonmetals are solids, one is a liquid, and 11 are gases. Seven of these metals are diatomics, which means that their base unit has two atoms, and three are polyatomic, meaning their base unit has more than two atoms. And those are phosphorus, sulfur, and selenium. 
All the others are again monoatomic, like the metals, where the base unit is a single atom. You do need to know the diatomic elements. These are hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. You can remember that they are the ones that form this L shape in the upper right corner and hydrogen, and you will need to memorize these and make sure that you know these elements always exist as diatomics, as it will come up many times during the semester. Metalloids are the remaining elements that occur on this diagonal, and they have properties that are somewhere between metals and nonmetals. They often have properties that are temperature or pressure dependent, and all of them are solids at room temperature. The type of ions that form are also predictable based on the periodic table. Because metals tend to lose electrons, they form cations. And they form cations with the same number of electrons as the nearest noble gas. This means that sodium, which has 11 electrons, will tend to lose one electron so that it can become like neon, which has 10. And magnesium, which typically has 12 electrons, will lose two to become like neon and be a two plus cation. On the other hand, nonmetals tend to gain electrons and form anions, so that fluorine gains one electron, again to become like neon with 10 electrons, and oxygen, which has eight in its neutral form, will gain two electrons and have a negative two charge. The elements that form predictable ions are those in the main groups of the periodic table that are highlighted in this figure. Another way of classifying the elements is by their blocks. Main group elements are at the ends of the periodic table, and these tend to have properties that are quite predictable, such as the ions we saw in the last slide. Transition elements in the center are often less predictable, and we will see more about these in the future. Many of the groups in the periodic table also have specific names. We will see more about the most common groups and the ones that you should know on the next few slides. First, consider the noble gases. These are found in group 18 on the far right of the periodic table. These elements are generally unreactive and very stable due to the arrangement of their electrons. Helium is lighter than air and in its liquid form, one of the coldest known materials. Other noble gases include neon, which is found in neon signs, argon, which is a small component of the atmosphere, krypton, xenon, and radon. Next to the noble gases are the halogens, which are the most reactive of the nonmetals. They are so reactive that they are essentially never found in nature in their pure form. So this includes elements like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. The other end of the periodic table, on the far left, we have the alkali metals. These are in group one and are the most reactive of the metals. They even explode when in the presence of water. Group two metals are known as the alkaline earth metals, and they are also generally quite reactive, although somewhat less reactive than the alkaline metals. There are various classifications of the elements. The, one, the groups that you should be familiar with are the alkaline metals, the alkaline earth metals, the halogens, and the noble gases. These terms will come up quite a bit throughout the course, so make sure that you're familiar with them as you go through this unit.